I think this started to record, I guess. Now let's move on to the screen again. So you are seeing everything right now, okay? Yes. Yes. And this is the title, the grammar time, as we, as I was telling you a little bit before, uh, it's in spite of, despite, and although. The grammar categories, I, I normally tell my students to, to avoid thinking a lot about, you know, the grammar categories or the grammar, grammar names, because in the, in the actual English, nobody's around just uh, with a quiz in the hand just asking you, hey, just tell me what is this, a noun, a preposition, or an adjective, right? <laughs> That would be so desperate. So uh, yeah, it, it, it's a matter of identifying what what is used in the regular uh, conversations that are taking place around the world in English. So if you heard, uh, especially native speakers, saying stuff uh, in a certain way, go ahead and stick with that. Yes, because that's that's what we call the the natural English, the natural language, and that's what we have to keep on. Sometimes the structures and uh, let's say the, the way we say things could be grammarly correct. They could be, you know, like syntactically correct, but uh, they might not sound natural to the people who is receiving the message. And what we want to aim for is try to sound natural, try to be understandable, and of course correct. But not all the correct forms are the, the best ones to express our messages. Uh, I would like to hear Lisette, please. Can you tell me what contrast is? What, what idea of contrast do you have in, in language or in life as you prefer? Just tell me what, do you, what, what you understand for contrast. Mm, let me see. Like contrast. It could be very related with something that opposes to something. Not exactly a right. position, but... Yeah, it's basically that. It's uh, when ideas or when things or, where, or when colors uh, are opposite, and we want to give them like, uh, like the power to appear or the power to come out from the rest. Mm. You can see in this uh, zebra image the contrast is clear between the black and white, but if you see uh, properly, you can identify that both colors are the star of the image. There's no like a protagonism of, of one color over the other. It's just the way you want to look at it. That's what, uh, in spite of, despite, and although are going to help us to do with these uh, ideas that we might have that in, in appearance they are opposite, and of course, grammarly, they are opposite, but there is a way to connect them. Mm -hmm. The first place, in spite of and despite, uh, it, uh, it's a very important thing to know that after these uh, guys, <laughs> we use a noun, a gerund, or a pronoun. Yes. Uh, I really had many problems with Spite, because I used to say despite of, but the only one that has the of after is in spite. Despite is only that word. In spite is a three-word uh, linking phrase. Yeah, so that's it's very important to have that in mind. Let me show you what I want to say with this little explanation in the next example. They never made much money in spite of their success. As we can see, their success is the noun we are looking for, success. Yes? And we put the connecting phrase right before it, in spite of their success. We have the contrast here. They never made much money. It's, a, it's, a, it's an independent clause that has, you know, like meaning by itself. But then we have in spite of their success. If we take only that last part alone, we feel that it's incomplete, right? Because if we say in spite of their success, there's like a question there, like, okay, what happened to say in spite of their success? 
and there's where it comes the first part of the sentence they never made much money okay so the contrast is here they never made much money in spite of their success that means well what you imagine normally is that a person with success will have much money but you can find some cases around the world where uh, this is the reality that some people that is successful doesn't have much money they can be successful uh, in school in school grades and academically but when they try to uh, overlap or try to transport these talents to the real life or the practical life or the job life they they don't find much uh, impact do you know any any cases like this is it can you can you give me some real life examples of people that has success in some areas but then fail in others it happens to you it happens to you you can tell me a couple of experience of the, of your past if, if you had something like this mm, i don't know i was just thinking in a maybe my father he's kind of a I don't know, he's very smart and he can do almost whatever he wants, but he never focuses on something. <laughs> so yeah. he's kind of a genius. But yes, he's like so smart, but in spite of yeah, his like uh, abilities, mm -hmm. like he never he never made uh, much money, much nothing. <laughs> like I don't know. That's the first thing yeah. that comes to my head. That that works as an example for it, of course. <clears throat> That's the same case in, in my family for one of my brothers. He is a very talented guy, and he has like great in the school that you would envy. But then when he comes out to try a job position, he messed that up, and he ends uh, out of of the job positions in less than three months. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't remember uh, a job for him that has lasted more than a, more than a semester. I would, I would dare to say, and he's always like having trouble to to deal with people. So he's very good with books and fic fictional people. I would say <laughs> people that is not there because they <laughs> they do not create him a, a a conflict. He just closes the book and conflict is over but when the people is there he he seems to struggle so in mm -hmm. spite of his talent he, he he can't deal very well with job positions and of course without the job positions he is not getting much money now let's move mm -hmm. on uh, I'm, I'm very fast if i'm moving very fast you just let me know i can i can regulate my my rhythm it's just that you know, you know, I'm a very talkative person. <laughs> so when I when I try when I when I start to speak, sometimes nobody can stop me. <laughs> but if you feel that I'm moving too fast, or maybe you need to slow it down and explain a little better or in depth, just let me know. Don't worry about it. You are in a friendly environment. Just feel like I'm your friend of your whole life, even though this is the first time we see each other. <laughs> okay, I think that I'm getting everything. So. I will let you know, but I think that it will be okay. It's now on this uh, second example, it says, in spite of the pain in his leg, he completed the marathon. <coughs> Do you identify the contrast there? Yes. Good. Now, so despite, on the third example, despite having a headache, I had a great birthday. And the last phase, the train was cancelled. In spite of that, we arrived on time. We are going to see that uh, with these two uh, expressions, with these two linking uh, phrases, in spite of and despite, you can also use the, the phrase the fact or the fact that. In spite of the fact that he was intelligent, yes. Uh, in case you want to connect with a with a subject and a verb, uh, you have to put the fact that before the subject and the verb, because as we were saying in the beginning, these guys go before a noun, 
a gerund form or a pronoun. Uh, do you identify properly the gerund forms of verbs, like if they were nouns? Mm, I think so. Small thing, but if uh, you want to give a review, we'll be good too. It is, it is kind of, it is kind of a, a tricky subject as well, it's a, it's a tricky issue, but it is a, just like, it comes now in the real life when you see sun, or you know something, no running here, or stuff like that. They are verbs, for example, run and smoke, but they are with the ing form to express not the action, as, as, as to be performed by a subject, but as a noun itself. So smoking, it's a noun, even though it comes from a verb transformed with an ing form. So that's the point. When we say smoking is bad, you see that the smoking was a verb before that. But when we put is, now we are giving it the character of a subject, of a noun. There's where the ing form of a verb transforms into a subject. Because we mm. can for that, we can put a verb. For example, running can help you to be healthier. You see? So running was a verb, or we knew it as a verb, but when we put the ing form and then we put the rest of the sentence with a verb, it transforms into the subject. Running can help you. You see, we normally create the sentences with, with people, animals, or ideas, but in this case, one activity is transformed into a subject. So that's the only form that we accept after in spite of or despite. So in spite of running every day, he uh, felt sick. Despite smoking a lot, he didn't get cancer. So. He, he will be very lucky if he doesn't get cancer by the way. <laughs> Let's move on. I was, I was just, just making a small parenthesis here. I was having a coffee with my mom and my brother. They came to visit this morning. And uh, I was in the middle of the preparation for this class because I had a hectic Friday in the school. We are finishing the, the first uh, term and I had to design the, the tests for my students, uh, the ones on special needs and stuff. So last night when I arrived home, I had no time to prepare anything. So I had to wake up very early this, very early this morning to try and do this. And my dear brother and my mom showed up for coffee. So I had to take care of that too. Then <laughs> we went to a, to a cafeteria and there was this lady asking for, for a cigarette called Lucky, Lucky Strike. Mm -hmm. I don't know what came to my mind, you know, Lucky, Lucky, if you don't get cancer or smoking that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's just a moment in life when, when you say, you know, why am I doing this? Right? Because I was, uh, I, I used to smoke a long time ago myself. And it was, it was like a, a moment when, when you don't actually think about the the, the bad things that come from that, and and it didn't matter how how many times the, my mom or my friends told me that I, that would kill me, I, I didn't stop. And then one one night I just saw my my ashtray and I saw so many so many butts there that I said, hey, I'm, am I going to kill myself? And then I stopped. I don't know how I did, but I stopped for good. And uh, it is one of the contrasts of life. Yes, when, when when you are just too young, you don't care about what happens because you feel immortal. And then the part of you that is grown up and says, you know, I have to take care of myself. I have to I have to eat healthy. I have to bring healthy things. Not, you know, like spend so much time outside, just wasting money and time or whatever. And that's a like the biggest contrast in life. Sometimes. Even though we are uh, very small and very insignificant compared to the universe, uh, we feel we are immortal and we are the masters. Mm -hmm. I will tell you <laughs> a little bit later why am I saying all these existential things, <laughs> but um, 
but they have a purpose. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move on on the topic and uh, show you uh, the other part of this lesson. It is although uh, although is the only is the only one that was like presented by the university as the topic for this uh, class, but I decided to include a couple more forms, which are even though and the shortest form that is though, because they work very similarly. So um, here the the difference is that. After all, though, and even though, we use a subject and a verb. That means the person or the animal or the idea that is uh, performing or carrying out the action. Even though it is slightly stronger and more emphatic than although. When, when we have situations <coughs> like the ones we were mentioning before of, of the intelligent father who has never who has never made it to uh, an interesting position or an interesting money making situation or the brother who who is very intelligent in school and he's got the best grades but he cannot like consolidate that in the real uh, practice uh, we can say even though even though it's a lot more emphatic it's a lot more powerful in the sentence that although so if you want to make a, a really um, stronger contrast, a really strong contrast in your sentence, you can say even though. So even though my father is really smart, he can't make it to a good position or he can make enough money. Or in my case, even though my brother is really smart, he cannot make it to a good job position or hold it for any long we have these examples. I enjoy the course, although I would have liked more grammar practice. As you can see on this part of although, the next words are a subject, which is I, and then the verb, would have liked. That's a perfect, uh, that's a perfect structure with, uh, with the like uh, verb right after all of them. So we have two sentences, I enjoy the course, and then we have the other part, which is the dependent clause. I would have liked more grammar practice. What I mean with dependent clause is that the, there is one of the parts of this whole sentence that doesn't make sense by itself. If we say, I would have liked more grammar practice, we feel it's kind of incomplete. So we need the first part, which is I enjoy the course. That's independent clause because we say I enjoy the course. It perfectly makes sense alone. But the second part of this example, I would have liked more grammar practice, feels like it needs something before. Or it feels like we were talking about something before that was good or that was enjoyable, but it was incomplete because it needed more grammar practice. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the second example of the blue letters, we say mm -hmm. all we saw each other every day. We didn't really know each other. I don't really like <coughs> about this example that was taken from the BBC, that it says other too close, one after, after the other, each other and then each other again. I would say if you are writing a text or an essay for the university, try to avoid as much these things uh, when, when we repeat the words very close to, to the other, because it feels like it was not attentive, it was not attentive enough, you know, the, the writing process. So try to avoid this repetition, this, this use of, uh, of words so close one after the other. But what we need here is to see the contrast and that after although we have a subject or a noun and sorry a subject and a verb the subject in this case is we and the verb is so although we saw each other every day we didn't really know each other then we move on to the next uh, to the next example even though she spoke very quietly he understood every word even though she spoke 
very quietly. He understood. So as you see, after the even verb, we have she, which is the subject, and spoke, which is the verb. And as well happens on the last example. She didn't get the job, even though she had all the necessary qualifications. Have you, have you heard of anything like this, that a person doesn't get the job even though uh, they have the necessary qualifications? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell me about it? Yes, I have personal experiences with that, but it's okay. That's life. <laughs> yeah. In most of the cases, what do you think the reason is? I don't know. It could be like some people sometimes they have like very like close relationship with the boss or I don't know, age, sometimes it's important, experience, I don't know. Yeah, and in this country, mm -hmm. uh, many things happen because they have friends of friends, right? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you something about mm -hmm. this, the, I don't know, I'm trying to understand how can I use these two, so these expressions, so I cannot Understanding the first example that you want to com like complain for something, but yes. you want to be polite. So it said, okay, I, I want more grammar time, but yeah. I, I need to be polite. So I said, oh yes, I enjoy the course, but yeah. <laughs> also I will have like more grammar practice. I don't know oh. if applies or not. Yeah. So as you as you just said it. In this, in this specific example, you are also contrasting the, the not so full satisfaction of your expectations, but at the same time, the politeness you want to show, right? So as you can see, this is more like a, uh, this is more like a mix feeling uh, to the sentence. It's not only the grammar differences between the sentences, but also the feelings in each part of the of the whole message. That's a really interesting point of view, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. Yeah. That, that's why I was saying that I really enjoy when the students show me their perspectives, because uh, I never thought like that. I was just focusing on the grammar thing, and of course there is a bigger contrast on the feeling that you would like to express with this sentence. Yeah, thank you for showing that. It is totally correct. You are expressing that you enjoy the course, you are trying to be polite, and then you express your complaining uh, in a very polite way without making the other person feel like strange or uncomfortable. And that was that the contrast can only be achieved, cannot only be achieved through the sentence itself, but also the feelings and the hidden message that comes with it. No okay. questions or any observation? So I think that I'm I'm getting almost everything like ninety nine percent. That's a little I don't know if your connection is good enough. I miss like seconds when you are talking. I'm yes. checking mine and it seems that it's okay. But maybe it's because the distance, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I don't normally use Skype or WhatsApp calls because I feel they have some kind of delay when, when you are trying to talk, so I really feel uncomfortable when that happens. But what is the tool that the university gave us or recommends us? Let's see, if maybe next time we find each other, we can use maybe Google Hangouts. I don't, I don't know how to use it yet, but I will try to get to know it, get to see how it works and see if it's a better alternative. Although the, most of the students, yeah, they, they are using Skype. So I, I will see if I can do something with Google Hangouts. Some people have told me that it's a little better uh, tool. But given that many people uh, are familiar with Skype, it is like the number one choice. Not because it is the best, but because it is the most popular. So, I don't know, maybe we can try and make the other resources popular to see if we can have a better experience. All right, we 
have the the form. This form is the most popular in uh, spoken English. In spoken English, we we hear it a lot in the end of the of the sentences, in the end of the messages. In the first example, is in the beginning. In the second, it is in the end. I think uh, the most popular, or at least the one that I have identified as the as the most common, is the second. Yes, like we waited ages for our, our food. The weather was really nice, though. It is really, really common to hear the word though in the end of uh, sentences when they are in spoken English, especially series or movies. Are you watching any movies or TV series or Netflix or anything like that, Lisa? Mm -hmm. No, to be honest, no. I, I don't have too much time. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Doing right now. Too much study or work. Yes, both. Mm -hmm. Both of them. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, the city is very big. You know, when when you need to do something, in San Paulo. It, I used to live in Colombia in past, or like I could do everything just walking. But here, you can take two hours to get to the place that you need. Traffic is terrible. Sometimes the metro is better, but still, <laughs> yeah, and everyone walks almost running. Yeah. So I have almost no time like, to <laughs> you manage to have such a good English. How, what do you do to, to study or to have the English you have? Because let me tell you, it's, it's a good level. Mm, actually, I don't know. I, I studied English in, at the like high school, but my school was, wasn't good at all. So, but, but I like it, music in English, so uh, I, re I wasn't, I didn't want to sing my favorite songs like, without knowing the meaning. Mm -hmm. So I started to translate in that time with a physical dictionary just to, to know what I was singing. But then when I was like 20, I took a, a course. It was kind of good. Um, yeah, I was studying. I took it in a serious way. But then uh, when I moved to Brazil, I served in a project of distribution of free books and the team was very international. So in that time we didn't speak Portuguese. So all we were learning Portuguese, no one spoke Spanish. And I I had no choice. I had to, to train my English and it, it wasn't very easy because we have people from like Australia. So the accent is very different. They use like people from like the U.S., different parts of the U.S., uh, <laughs> Philippines, yeah. Korea, so it was, yeah, so I think that was like more, I had no choice, I had to, to learn, but I, I'm enjoying this grammar time because sometimes I can use the words, but I don't know the grammar, so I'm yeah. learning a lot of, not right now I'm learning, yes. Well, that's that's a really really interesting story, especially because when when I teach my my private classes, uh, I have had students who are with me like a couple years studying and trying to perfect their English, and we have identified that there is no better practice or like no better way to boost your English level than to find situations where you cannot escape. Mm -hmm and not take the use of English. Because sometimes when we have courses in, in Colombia or Spanish-speaking countries or, or other countries where they speak a language different to English, we normally move on to that language after the class. And that it kind of impairs the, the rhythm, the learning process. And uh, whenever I find that situation with one of my students, yeah, I try to like push the person to even speak or type in English on the WhatsApp messages, everything. Because there is the only way that we that we can improve that English level and make it move forward. Sometimes here in Colombia it's difficult for many students because they don't have the opportunity to practice outside of a classroom. And uh, that's why they take so long uh, to, to learn. Uh, an effective way to communicate. 
in my in my case I was as as you did music but also video games and, and movies I was just like a kind of a freak with that and I used to translate as well with a physical dictionary and looking for for pages but web pages were very expensive in that moment remember when the internet was through the telephone line it was, it was really difficult <laughs> it was really yeah, yeah. I remember it was like connecting to the internet was like making a phone call so if you stayed on the internet for two hours it was like a two-hour call and they would charge you for a two-hour call so the the service the internet service bill was huge one day my mom almost hit my face with one of those flip-flops <laughs> <laughs> because yeah it was it was like 300,000 pesos and back then it was Hell of a lot of money. Yeah, you can imagine. Yeah, I was just like around 17 years old. I didn't have any means to have my mom pay that thing. <laughs> yeah, actually, a very it's funny to see it from you know from this position in the future. But back then it was a tragedy. <laughs> Okay, yeah, no market. So what do we pay? The market, the groceries, or the phone bill? What do we do? <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next section. Okay. <laughs> I would like you to tell me, why, uh, you see two examples, one in blue that says correct in the end, and one that is gray that has the word wrong in the end. Can you identify why they are correct and wrong? Mm, let me see. Mm. I think that's because in the second example, it has there is no subject there. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the main mistake. Correct. Yeah, the word uh, even though. As we were speaking before, they need a subject and a verb. And in this second example, not being hurt, it's a noun all, all together, not being hurt. It's like it, it makes the, the function of a noun. And what goes with nouns are the first two expressions that we say, in spite of or despite. So in this second example, instead of even though we should use despite, not being hurt, my mates were really worried, or in spite of not being hurt, my mates were really worried. So yeah, mm -hmm. it was to identify by you. And we have another two here. <coughs> well, another two pairs. <laughs> the first one says, despite not being hurt, my mates were really worried. It's correct because, as I told you before, not being hurt is a noun phrase that includes uh, the gerund being. And remember that a gerund is a noun made from a, made from a verb. Then we have, despite I wasn't hurt, my mates were really worried. It's wrong because we have, after despite, we have the subject and the verb. And that doesn't work with that type of word. Then we have the other two guys in the back, uh, in the bottom. In spite of not being hurt, my mates were really worried. It's correct because, of course, we here are using the right expression. And the last one says, in spite of, I wasn't hurt. Again, we are putting a subject and a verb after in spite of, and that doesn't work according to the grammar rules that we were mentioning before. I'm going to share with you uh, a link on the... On the WhatsApp, uh, on the Skype uh, chat, so you can uh, scroll down, and there are quizzes on the bottom. I would like you to take a little time. They are very, very short. It's like five questions. You are going to take the time to answer them and tell me if you find any any difficulties solving them. Just give me one second.
you tell me if it goes, if it takes you to the page. Something. Yes. Yeah. So easy. If it's there, you can click on add again. It will be back in that. And it says. Uh, which one? Extra contrasting expressions. Five questions. Okay. Yeah. Do you want me to 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 answer the 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 questions here by myself, or do you want me to answer in your screen? Oh no, I just answer in your screen and tell me how you do. If you could make the five correct, or if you failed one, and which one was. Okay. If you want to read out loud the question you are solving, you can go ahead and do it. I just failed the first one. <laughs> yes. It says the cold he still went out without a jacket and I Okay. And I, yes. Okay. You choose. <laughs> I choose the first one. We have even though, even although, despite the fact, and despite, do you choose? I even choose though? wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, remember that even though goes with a subject and a verb. And the first thing you have right after even though is the cold. The cold mm -hmm. isn't. Yes. Cold, right? So we should use despite. Despite the cold, right? Yes. If we use that, we verify and it's correct. Yeah. Shall we move on to the second one? Sure. Okay. So the second one says, I don't know if this is uh, like uh, mixing the questions, but I will read it and see if it's the same that you have. They decided to split up. They still care deeply for each other. Is that the same question you're getting? Yes. Okay. Which which option would you choose? They okay. decide to split up. They still care deeply for each other. Mm. Like the C, although. Although, yes. Although, yeah. <laughs> decide to split up, although they still care deeply for each other. Yeah, I would say we have they. It's a subject, and then still care is a verb. So I would say, yeah, it, it actually fits all right in that. So let's, let's try and... Because we never say even although. And in spite of and despite should be followed by a noun, not by a subject like that or a pronoun. So that's correct. Yeah, now we are getting to know a little bit better how this works. Uh, it worked perfectly. We have to just focus on the thing that we have a subject and a verb. We have a little adverb here, but it doesn't quite modify the structure of the whole sentence. Shall we move on to the third one? Sure. So the third one, my screen says he failed one of his exams. He managed to get into a good university. Mm. We have four options, despite the fact, in spite of the fact, in spite of, or even. I will use even. 
even uh, in Spanish would work like incluso. So oh, right. It's like to add. Mm -hmm. I'd like to add the expression here. And this is like a little a little a little trick they add there because in this in this uh, exercise the possible options are despite the fact, in spite the fact or in spite of the even you can ignore it because it doesn't make part of this exercise right now. So oh. he failed of his exams. So okay, be... so remember for you <coughs> sorry, mm -hmm. in the beginning of the class that despite and in spite of uh, they can be followed by the fact. Mm -hmm. When we put mm -hmm. that couple words, the fact, we can add a subject and a verb and it works okay. Yes. So there is no problem. In this case they don't put even though or although. And that kind of causes a little confusion. But then it comes the words the fact that help us to include a subject and a verb with these prepositional uh, phrases, despite and in spite of. Do you have any favorite option there? <laughs> Not really. I'm just thinking the processing the information okay. and then mixing everything. Mm. We know that in the, for example, the option C, if we say in spite of, we need mm -hmm. a noun after, mm -hmm. and we have is a, it's a subject in a verb. So the option C has to be mm -hmm. discarded right up, mm -hmm. right. Then we have the options A and B. In the mm -hmm. option, we have in spite the fact. Do you think, is that correctly written or do you think something's missing or something's additional? Mm. I don't know. Yeah, remember like we were talking about despite and in spite of. Mm. Okay. Right, I remember. So it's missing an of there. It's missing an of. So as it is missing an of, I would say the only option here would be despite the fact. Because it's mm -hmm. the only correctly written. Even though the C is correctly written too, we know the next part of the sentence doesn't match. So I would go with the A. Do you agree with that? Yes. Yeah, it, it seems like it's working. <laughs> <coughs> All right, in this case, mm, we can. If you, there is a theory up here in the in the same page. This is one of the pages that I used to get like the explanations, and here they also explain the thing about the fact. Um, yeah. It's here, right on the other page. Are you seeing my screen right now? Yes. You know, a British Cultural page, we have the theory or the explanation of this, um, the fact. One second. Let me identify. Yeah, right here. Uh, is it visible for you? Yes. Okay, it's a note that it is common to use in spite of and despite with the expression the fact that or the fact in this uh, exercise that we were solving, followed by a subject and a verb. Mm -hmm. So, with examples, in spite of the fact that he worked very hard, he didn't pass the exam. And despite the fact that he worked very hard, he didn't pass the exam. Remember that in spoken English or in practice or collocations, uh, they don't normally say the word that. If it can be omitted, they, they normally do. So that's why on the example of the BBC, on the question, we don't have the word that after the fact. But if you put it, it's correct. If you don't put it, it's also correct. So it's not a big deal. Okay. 
Okay. So, yeah, do you understand it? Yes, I'm just trying to assimilate it. Because, you know, I use the language, but as I mentioned to you, we were all learning Portuguese, so we were merciful with each other, and we didn't correct ourselves. So I, I know that I have a lot of, like, I miss grammar, and I trying to practice a lot because, <laughs> well, in the past, uh, we used to coordinate everything in English, but now we learn Portuguese, so we don't use English anymore. So I'm forgetting. <laughs> yeah, um, yes. yeah, so it's different now. Yeah, so, no yeah. your English is, is, is really good. The only thing is try not to let it go to the throat. That's, that's the only thing. Uh, I'm pretty sure that you, you have the skills that what, any person would communicate in English, and I'm pretty sure you're doing a good job. These are these grammar things are like very specific. But if you make uh, like uh, not so precise use of the word in specific cases, it is not a big deal for the people who is like interacting with you. The only moment that I would say you should be really, really careful with these kind of structures is when you are writing um, an essay, writing a thesis or a, or a project for the university or presenting to your company. In that moment, when you have to uh, like comply with some rules and some protocols, there is where you have to use this type of theory. But if you are just talking with friends, talking with people, interacting in regular life, this is not a big deal. If you make it, if you make it in a in a wrong position, or if you say the despite of, it's not going to be a, a big issue. The only moment when this is totally necessary is for academic writing or academic communication or very formal communication. Just make sure to to have all your grammar rules uh, clear when you are trying to communicate with people in higher ranks or anything. But when you are in a regular life interaction, don't worry so much about this and do not let this go to your head and maybe uh, block you from communicating with others. There's no more powerful tool to learn English and to practice good language than to open yourself and, and use it as much as you can. Mm, okay. Okay. We, we still have some minutes. I think we can make this, and I will recommend you a little book later. So you can identify these structures during your reading, if you have the time, of course. Number four, it says, I tried her chocolate cake. I can't stand sweet things. Before we move on to the options, do you know what the meaning is for can't stand? Yes. Okay. Like, mm -hmm. Mm. Something you can't stand. Uh, lies, liars, people. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Mm. yeah that's a very or good. Gossiping. Or gossiping too. Mm. Let me see. So it says even. Uh, sorry, I try her chocolate cake. Uh huh. I can't stand sweet things. Even although, despite of the fact, in spite of the fact, and in spite of. So the first one is not because it's, it's incorrect, right? Yes, yeah, incorrect. We can say so, even though, but not even all the things. Yeah, even though will be okay, right? Even though I don't know. Mm. But this this part of the fact is is, is wrong too because it's and then I don't know, in spite of the fat or in spite of, I don't know which one. Okay, yeah, you're very true. On the B, we say despite, but we don't say despite of. So that's yeah. correct. So now on the C, we have in spite of the fact is correct, in spite of is correct. Now okay. we have to focus on what is next. It says, I can stand. That's a subject and a verb. Mm. So we we'll just see. Yeah, yeah. So if we want to add a subject and a verb after in spite of, we need the expression the fact or the fact that. Mm -hmm. 
the way possible. So let's try with the C and check if it's correct. And it is. So those are, as you can see, they are very small details. Uh, sometimes this, it, it happened to me in the beginning of my English learning process with the S in the present of the verbs for the third person. Remember when you say, mm -hmm. how, how can I remember that it's a she or a he and that it goes with S? How can they make how can they make that without even thinking about it? <laughs> I'm saying I work, she works. I was like, she work and I work. And, and I couldn't identify when to put the S, but it comes with practice. Yes. So if, you, if you try these several times, you will see it start coming naturally. Now the last question says, getting up early, he still arrived late to work. Even though, in spite of the fact, despite the fact, and in spite of, what will you do? Mm. I will use maybe. Um, letter V in spite of. Yes, in spite of the others. Uh, the B and the C are to use with subject and verb, and what we have here is a, it's an ING form of a verb, mm -hmm. getting up. So even though it doesn't work, because you need a subject and a verb, in spite of the fact and despite of the fact, also work with that kind of thing, so subject and verb. So the last option is the only one that we have there to do the job, and it's correct. As you can see, you did it really quickly, and it was right. Okay, yeah, so congratulations on that one. That was very quick. Now, uh, as, a, as, a little, as a little thing before we finish, it is uh, one of my favorite authors in, in life. It's called uh, Voltaire from, from France. It's a classic. And um, he's got a, a really good book that is called Micromegas. Let me, let me put the, the title here. If you want to read it in Spanish or English, as you prefer, but it's like the biggest, uh, the biggest contrast, as I was telling you in the beginning of the class. Uh, he is criticizing uh, through all this book uh, the uh, the attitude of humans uh, mm -hmm. towards and towards the universe. In this book, he is telling the story of a uh, of a. Uh, I would say alien, because he comes from from Saturn, and uh, in, uh, there is one from Saturn, and there is another from Sirius, which are like planets. Saturn is a planet we know, but Sirius is a planet he invented. And these guys are really big, and they are they are just giants, and they come to the Earth like to visit. They are explorers of the space, and they find this really small forms of life that they needed like microscopes to be able to see us and even though we are so small they found we are so presuming so that's why i want to bring this book to uh, to the class and to recommend it to you because it's, it's really humbling uh, when when you see authors identify this attitude of humans towards the rest of the universe and we think we are the center. We think that we are the rulers, and it is not. It is not reality. It is not. It's, it's not the reality. We are just. We we could be the viruses of a bigger organism that we don't. That is so big that we can't even imagine. <laughs> so I don't know. Sometimes thinking about that haunts me. <laughs> that we are just like a simple like a simple virus living in a. In a huge organism that we don't know, <laughs> because that's what we do. We we simply take resources and waste them. So I don't know. I'm getting too existential nowadays. <laughs> let me put the let me put the, the link here for the free book. You can you can get on that book and read it uh, in Spanish. is also good. I would recommend editorials like Oveja Negra. They have very good translators, although I don't know if they are still uh, on the market. <laughs> <coughs> and well, with that, I think uh, you can find the contrast in ideas, in the whole ideas, how small humans are 
compared to these big giant visitors from space and still uh, the difference between mentalities the, the big ones are very humble they know languages they know science and even though they are they are humble but the other guys humans are very small but they think they are the center of the universe well i won't talk anymore because i know you have to do things and i will give the class a, a wrap up right now and i really want to congratulate you for your job you're doing with your english it's really amazing learning portuguese learning english and, and all that it's titanic <laughs> mm -hmm. i will go for ebrio finally <laughs> yeah <My God. laughs> no yeah it's, it's right it's, uh, uh, i have a goal maybe in two years in moving to israel it's kind of crazy you know but i love languages so i wow. will do my best to go there great i, yeah. I really best you can do it girl Mm, let me tell you something as about like maybe just for you to think because you're talking about the existence and I don't know. Well, I mm, I kind of agree with the, some ideas about the book that says that okay, like we need to be humble because we are not the center of the universe. But it in one sense, it seems that really human beings are at the center of the universe. Otherwise, I don't know. I don't know. Some some things it seems that without the appreciation of hum, human beings, uh, things lose the worth. I don't know. For instance, imagine uh, the most amazing place. It's just there, but if there's no one to enjoy that place, so it's kind of like I don't know. Yeah. It doesn't so make we need to, there is no one yeah, to yeah and i don't know well i'm christian that that's why i like languages because people try to talk me about god but a very subjective god so i i don't want someone that i don't know but then i found a way to know him and it's through the bible and exactly i don't know i speak a little bit of yeah, english portuguese and spanish but the word life is life but in greek there are three the same there are three words to explain the word life so it's like the bios which is like biological life ck mm -hmm. that psychological life but there's another life that almost no one knows about it that is zoe life which is the eternal and divine life that That's comes from god yeah, it's very interesting right so i didn't know when i was a teenager that i have a human spirit that said, okay, I have a soul and I have a body, but I didn't know that I have, I have a human spirit. And in that human spirit, I can contact and I can receive the soil life. And you know, when I knew that, I don't know, all the universe makes sense for me now, even though I'm so small, but I can, ha I, I can content God in my human spirit, even I'm almost nothing like a little virus. <laughs> Well, but I don't know. I just wanted to share it with you. <laughs> I can agree more with you. You are totally right. That's why uh, it is like a, a matter of taking all what works and make it work even better. So mm -hmm. just, we can contend God in ourselves and we have to be grateful for all the things He gives us. But of course, never lose humbleness because that, that's what makes us human. Yes. <laughs> okay. okay. I, I, should... I really enjoyed this class very much. Uh, sorry if I didn't make this really didactic. I, I, I'm trying to get the drill of this, but I promise if we find each other again, I will try and do my best to make this even better. Okay, thank you so much. I feel like I, I learned a lot because as I told you, I don't know grammar. So I just speak and I'm studying now, so I need to, yeah be able to teach other people so i need to be clear about grammar so i could see that you really know the content and you helped me a lot okay so, thank you very uh, much for this uh, and i hope thank you mm -hmm. thank you so much i need to go right now but thank okay, you so bye. much <laughs> thank you have a good day you too. thank you bye bye